Recording. Everybody smile. There you go. We'll get you. We'll get you on the video. All right. I'm on a. I'm on a camera now, buddy. You know. Okay, I think we're good. So we are. We're starting a new series today. Yeah. Anybody get, anybody get excited the last couple of weeks to talk about the power of God in yeah. life, the power that the Spirit brings? I almost brought about another coat this morning, but I figured we should probably not waste another coat just shaking it up because nobody, nobody <laughs> drinks black coat anymore. But uh, but we have power to for life that yes. God has sent us that indwells within us. There's a second experience that God desires for every believer to have, and that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that comes access with power. Power yeah. that can be witnesses. And so as we were going through the, the month of June, June's not over yet, so maybe you read ahead and you're already finished with the book back, but uh, June is continuing throughout the week, and uh, so we are, we are continuing with the book of Acts, and we've been challenging everybody, or maybe asking everybody, as you read a chapter of Acts a day, ask the Holy Spirit, inspire me today, ask the Holy Spirit to inspire you today, like, inspire me as I read this, and, and I know there's a few different people, we, we just had our missional community on Wednesday night, and they've been inspired, they're like, wow, this is, this is cool God stuff, I, I want some of this. And I don't know if you, I think I agree with them. I hope you guys agree with them. And I want some of this. And so Amen. we've been uh, praying, ask God, how, how do we, what's next? What's the next step as a body? And I believe, and we believe as pastors, that we need to live as sent people. We look at our mission statement. We say it every Sunday morning. We get in here. We say we are a family of servant missionaries sent to make disciples. So it comes to the question, then what, how, do I, how do I live since? How do I live this life? You know, I, I want to share Jesus. I know how awesome Jesus is. He's transformed my life. Anybody else? I mean, he's, he's changed me. He's made me new. He's, he's brought life. He's brought hope. He's, he's renewed my spirit. Man, he, he's changed the direction of the course of my life. Everything has been better now that I have Jesus. And I think without a shot of if I went around and asked, well, I mean, don't you want to share that? And everybody would say, yeah, I, I want the, 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 the transformation and awesomeness that the, that the Holy Spirit is doing in my life, that Jesus has brought to my life. Man, I want my friends around me to experience it. Because I, I look at my friends sometimes, I look at my family members, I, I look at my neighbors, I look at my neighborhood, and I can see brokenness, I can see destruction, I can see the work of the enemy all over the place. And so, I mean, I, for the most part, I think believers are eager, and I want to tell somebody about Jesus. I, I know they need Jesus. So with this series, we're going to talk about us as a sent people. How do we live sent? And we, we see we've got four different aspects that we're going to talk about. This, this sermon series is going to take us through the, the month of July. We're going to have a guest speaker right in the middle of it. But we're going to go through uh, four different aspects. How do, we, how do we speak? How do we use our speech? How do we use our conversations? How do we talk and share the gospel with people? Because we know that it, it is indeed, we just went through James. We do have to act and do, but we also... It, it's a, pro a proclamation. It's something we can say. We can speak the gospel and, and share the gospel with people. So God wants to encourage us in that. We also want to talk about how do we use our home to live sin. God has given each of us a domain, each of us a location, each of us a place that we can invite people into. We can share the gospel. We can share who Jesus is and what he's done in our homes. So how do we use meals? How do we use things like barbecues? How do we use things like grocery store trips and, and uh, going downtown? How do we use our homes to share Jesus and share the gospel? The second thing is our heart, that in prayer, uh, how do we use our heart to be a sent people? If we are a sent people, man, it, it engages our heart, it engages us in prayer. And, and so there's a the prayer, the heart aspect to being a sent people. And then the last thing on there is a hand, and, and that's service. How do we how do we serve others? What does God want to do? If we're people who are sent, then he, He's asking us, He's encouraging us that we use our hands in service for Him as a sent people, ones that represent God, ones that share the good news. So I'm excited about this, that it's going to go beyond just a, yeah, I want to do that, to, no, I can. Empowered yeah. by His Spirit, yeah. we can be a tent of people that share the gospel, that share the good news of yeah. who Jesus is with all those who are around yeah. us. 
that compared to that, that's something. Uh, look, Amen. That's a trailer. Uh, you know, you, you always watch trailers. Trailers of, of things are always really awesome, right? And we go to the movies, sometimes they're not. I think the trailer and the messages are all going to be awesome. It's all going to be good. <laughs> all right, we're going to get some good stuff. So I think, yeah, as I've been reading through the book of Acts, and as we've been talking about the book of Acts, I mean, it's been inspiring. It's just been like, yeah, I, I want to see some of that happening. So we want to equip you. We want people to experience Jesus just like we do. At Capital City Church, we say, we value leading others to Jesus. And so, man, I want, I want in. I want in on it. And Jesus, not only do we, we as pastors want in on it, we want you guys to be in on this sin life, but Jesus says, you guys are in. Did you guys know that? Amen. Jesus says, we're a set people. Yeah. That we are people that are set on mission, that are set with the message, that are set on faith. And if you don't know this, look, look, there's going to be a few passages here. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. He's talking to the, to the disciples. It wasn't just the twelve, it was, it was the many. He said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with, that have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. And that's going to be the, that's going to be the verse that I, I, I hope that gets down inside of us. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Freely you have received, freely give. Uh, I was talking with Angel a while back. I think I've, I've quoted him again a few times, but he said, one time a pastor told me that we're all just beggars who found bread. We're telling other beggars where to find the bread. But Jesus makes that statement. He says, freely you have received, freely give. We have received such great, amazing grace. Man, we have received such life. We have received such mercy, such peace, such understanding, such glory. I mean, we have received all these things that Jesus tells us in this room, You've received it, now give it away. You didn't earn it. We know that. We didn't earn it. We're going to go through this a little bit. But we didn't. Man, we've received this thing. Go. And it wasn't what inspires me about this verse and what inspired me about looking through Acts. And I was looking at all these miracles, all these signs and wonders. You ever read the Gospels? You're just like, wow, God, you're awesome. Jesus, man, you're healing the sea, sick, opening blind eyes, multiplying food. And, and Jesus doesn't say, this is just for me. That's right. He said, no, you get to go heal a city. You get to raise the dead. You get to cleanse the leper. You get to drive up. You get to do it. Freely you have received, give it away. And he continues this in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. Some of us that maybe have been in church for a while, we know we, we like to call this the Great Commission, but it's the commission of Jesus commissioning us, his people, to go. And it says this, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And so he's about to commit, he's about that uh, with all this authority that I have, I'm about to give you a statement. I'm about to give you an assignment. And he says, therefore, go and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you to, to obey. I mean, we're in it. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we just went over. Power for life. What is this? He says, you will receive power so that you may be witnesses. In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the you, us, yeah. we, as a people, we, as a we are included in God's great plan. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, 14 through 21 is an exciting passage. It talks about the fact that we've been made new. We're a new creation. How many like the newness that they have in Christ? The yeah. life that God gives us. And it is for a purpose. He says, you have been made new, and now we have this great message of reconciliation. Now we are everybody, we are Christ's ambassadors. Yeah. We are Christ's sent ones. To tell the world about Jesus and, and how he can be reconciled and how he can change your life. Living as sent people, we understand the gospel is good news for our past, our present, and our future. Living as sent people, we, we are in celebration of, of what God has done and, and who He is for us. Man, I live in celebration. Man, God is really good. I get, I get excited. I, get, I celebrate when I think about being a sent I celebrate all that God has done for me and in me. Man, He saved my marriage. Man, He, 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 he raised me in a family. God, oh, yeah. He sent me uh, and put my feet on a solid ground. And man, through my whole life, I've been able to live in peace and understanding and comfort like all my friends, they, they have an experience. I mean, God has done me for us. So as a sent people, I celebrate yeah. what God has done in me. But I also look forward to what God can do through me and around me. That is not just for me. 
That wow, when I see brokenness in people's lives, when I see brokenness in my neighbors and my friends and my family, man, I, I know the God that did it for me can, can do it for them. These are the foundations of being a sent people, celebrating all God has done for me and knowing with anticipation He can do it for the for the next person. He can do it for my children. He can do it for my poor. He can do it for many. He can do it. Yes. We understand that the gospel as a sent people, that gospel is good news. It is right. For people's past, for our present, and for our future. Amen. The gospel reveals to us who God is and what He's doing, what He wants to do. And so we're going to look at that as, we're, as we start this series of uh, being a sent people, living sent lives. We, we're starting this with what is the gospel? And hopefully for us this morning, it lays that foundation. It gets us excited. It gets us pumped up that, yeah, what I've received, what I've got. And then it gets us excited about as we look around us and we see the brokenness and we see chaos all around us. We get excited because we know if he's done it for me, he can do it again. He can do it in their lives. He can do it in my life. He can do it in our neighborhoods, right? So let's turn again to Romans chapter 1. And we're going to have a good time this morning. All right. Because the gospel is good news. It's something to celebrate. It's something yes. to, to party about. It's something that brings life and brings excitement. And this morning, whether you, you are familiar with what God has done in your life, or maybe you're unfamiliar, and you, you're here this morning hearing this for the first time, and we're hoping that Jesus' that life is birthed inside of you, you come alive and get excited that God has given you life. He wants to bring life. He's not a God, we say this all the time, he's not a God that is angry and mad at us. He's a God that wants to crouch on near to us. Yes. He wants to be in us. He wants to be through us. Yeah. And he's excited about us. You know that he's excited about us? So let's read chapter 1. Uh, we're looking at verse 16 through 18. Salvation begins and ends with belief. You say, how, how does this life transformation happen? How does this power of God in my, in my life uh, happen? It all starts and it ends with belief. Believing on Him. Believing on who He is and what He's done. And it continues in that. As I, as I walk with the Lord, as some of us have walked with the Lord for many years, some of us have walked with the Lord for a short amount of time, and as we walk with the Lord, it all continues with believing. Believing on God. Believing on what He is. What He says He's done. And when you do, it brings transformation. It brings life. So let's look at this. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 18, we're going to read. It says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith, by belief. From first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godliness and all the wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. And the gospel, the good news, the power of God, it starts with faith and it continues. It says this, uh, the righteousness that is from faith first to last. So as we begin the good work of Yes, Jesus, I believe in you. I want to follow you. That moment of salvation, we can say, some of us said, yeah, it was, I can know kind of the date and the time. Maybe for me it was when I was rather young. I said, yeah, I, I believe in you, Jesus. I, I believe you're the best thing for my life. I want to follow you all my days life. In that moment, I had, I had faith. It was faith that, that gave me that opportunity. It was belief deep in my heart that, yes, Jesus, I want to live for you. And now, every day since then, Every day in our life is still faith to believe, yes, Jesus, you are who you say you are. Yes, Jesus, you can do what you say you can do. Yes, Jesus. And when we do that, this morning I want to encourage us that there, there's power. There's power in our life. There's power through our lives when we have faith. Yes. It says this, that it's the power of God that brings salvation. That's right. That brings, that word salvation, that brings restoration, that brings wholeness, that sets things right. And so when I'm looking around and I'm saying, yes, there's all this brokenness, I said, wow, this is the gospel, this is the good news about who God is and what he's done that brings transformation in my life, and it can bring transformation in those who are around me. 
So I say, I want to be, I want to know this gospel. I want to know this good news. Because I know in my life there's still some brokenness that I need some restoration in. And, and I know when I'm looking around, I, I want to know this good news enough so that as a set people, I can communicate it. I can share it with people that are around me so that they can experience what? The power of God, the infinite power of God in their life to bring wholeness, to bring restoration. So it starts by faith, it's filled with faith, and it ends with faith. All the way through our whole journey with God, it's all faith, all filled with faith in who He is. In Philippians, it says that this that we work out our fear, uh, our, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, because it is God that is in work within us to do His good works. Yeah. So as we have faith, as we're working out our salvation, man, we're, we're having faith, we're believing God, the power of God, and we're just transforming us, and He's doing the work in us. Yes. You, ever wanna, uh, you ever know that there's aspects of your life that you want it to be better? And so what do we do? Sometimes we try to set up a plan, we try to we kind of do different things in order to, to get us to get better, but it actually, Philippians, and, and this demonstration of the gospel is that it's God actually working in us to do the good things. Sometimes I just say, God, I just need a little bit more faith to believe. I just need a little bit more faith to believe. But God changes our heart to actually do what He wants us to do. God enables us to do what He wants us to do. It's God at work in me because I say, I believe, I have faith in you, and He works in me to do what He wants to do. It's all about God. The power for salvation is all about God. So we've got to understand, right, where, uh, what are we saved from? Maybe you're newer, maybe you're older, you've got to be reminded, what am I saved from? If I need salvation, right, if, if somebody was drowning, they need saving. Why? Because they're close to death. And if there's a fire in the building, there's a need to be a fireman to go and save them because the fire will consume them, right? There, there is something, if we've been saved, there's something we're being saved from. And I believe also that there's something that we're being saved to. Yes. That's what this series is about. So if we're saved from something, we're saved to something else. Yes. To be a sent people. To be a sent people yeah. with the message of the gospel. So verse 18 shares with us what we're being saved from. Verse 18, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. So what are we being saved from? We're being saved from our own wickedness. Mm -hmm. Romans reveals that it's the penalty, uh, the, the penalty of sin is death. There's a wrath of God towards all those that have broken laws. Just in, like in regular society, right? We know that when laws are broken, that there's a, a penalty for that, for that law that is broken. In eternity, in view of all of life, there's a power of God that is to set us free. Set us free from what? From the penalty of our sins, of our wickedness. Where, where areas in our life and in where the brokenness of our lives has caused the uh, truth to be suppressed. So, suppressed. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it gives us this great truth that we were dead in our transgressions. Andrew, why is that great truth? Because we were once dead in our transgressions, but because of our faith in Christ, now we've been given new life. Yeah. And now, instead of being children of wrath, yeah. ones that are sentenced to death, ones that have the penalty of death weighing down upon us, now we have been given new life. Now we who are dead are made alive. That's good news. Yes. That's good news. When I think about myself and my life, there's areas I'm like, yeah, I'm excited that I have new life, that God offered me something better than what I'm in. When I think about those who are around me, I say, wow, that it's good news that there's something better than the brokenness that they find themselves in. There's, there's life in the midst of the death. There's light in the midst of their darkness. There's wholeness where they have current brokenness. Yeah. We were hopeless. There is nothing that we could do to help ourselves but Christ, but God stepped in. It's good news. Praise God. And it's not just that God was nice. He wasn't just looking for people who behave the best. You know, there's just a thing where I was like, oh, who, who's the best? Who would be the best for my kingdom? Oh, who, who would be the best addition to, to the church? Who would be the, the best person that I could pick? 
No, actually, we were, we were enemies of God. We were children of wrath. We were picked to be children, not because we had good qualities. Now, I'm going through this uh, adoption, and Rachel's already out, uh, but um, this yesterday, we just received in the mail our license uh, for adoption. So we uh, were getting really, really close. Um, we were even introduced to, to some children this week. Aww. So uh, it was introduced. It was a letter that just had information about it. But um, we're getting close. Yes. And I'm thinking, and this reality is coming to life for us. Yes. I'm like, how much do I really believe this gospel? Yes. That God, he didn't think about me and didn't say, okay, here's Andrew. He's really good for me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him. He, he fits well with my plan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him in the kingdom. No, I was, I was the enemy of God. I was, I was under his breath. I was, I was a, children of, a child of breath. And God said, no, I choose you. Amen. And that's the reality. We have to do that. We, to, to understand how great and how marvelous the gospel is, we've got to understand how terrible it was yes. prior to that. Hallelujah. That there is nothing good in us that, that God said, oh yeah, I like that good character. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you into the kingdom. No, God said, it shows how great his mercy is, how great his, his care is, how kind, how beyond kind yeah. is how merciful he is. Yeah. And he says, you know, there's nothing good in you, but I want you. I choose you. I'm going to make you a child of mine. I'm going to lavish you with love. Amen. And when I'm, when I'm thinking about its adoption, you know, there's, there's like, there's this checklist of things that okay, we want to be true or not true of a child that we adopt, right? And, 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 and for a while, we're like, wow, I don't know. Do we want this? We're like debating. We're talking with the social worker. You know, like, okay, this is a good trait or this is a bad trait. This is, this is something we want in our child. This is something we don't want. You know, right? right pick, and we said, wait a second. And if we're going to love on a child, and we're going to accept the child into our home, and it's going to be yes. full of, it had to be this, the same love that the Father showed yes. us, and we're going to show this, to this child, right? And so this goes into even how we parent as a family of God. We, I mean, our children, we're going to love them as financially. When we have broken children, but I'm excited about different things in the room, but that we're just showing love of God because we understand what's been shown to us. Yes. yes. The gospel is good news. Yes, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin on my, yes. on my part. In John chapter 17, we read it this morning, that, that Jesus prays his prayer to God. That this, is, this is the magnitude. You think, you know, Jesus is perfect. Jesus was easy to love. Yes. Of course God loved Jesus. He was perfect. But this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, I gotta pray that you would love them with the same love you loved me. Lord. Jesus said, I pray, love them, love these wicked, sinner, broken yeah. people, the same love that you loved me, That's right. your perfect son. That's the reality this morning for us. Yeah. It's good news. That we are loved by the Father in heaven. Yes, amen. And whether this morning you believe that he's this angry person up there just wanting to punish, or I'm praying that the Holy Spirit reveals to you this morning that it's more than that, that God is actually a loving God who desires us to be close, so much so that he would send his son to live perfectly just for us so that we can receive love and we can be adopted, not as half-sibling, not as stepsons and daughters, but as full, dearly beloved daughters and, and sons and with yes. an inheritance, a hope for a great future. Yes, amen. amen. This is the good news that we have. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. We have been saved from the wrath of God to live as dearly loved children. Mm -hmm. When we don't understand this love, we live lives that are full of guilt and full of shame. When we, when we don't quite believe this, we think it's, oh, this is too good to be true. <laughs> then we always then we always feel guilty. We always feel shameful for the wrong things that we do. Yeah. But this morning, the good news is that we can be set free from that. And God can bring his love to set us free. 
And then we can say, when we know our neighbors, and we know our friends, and when we know our children, we know our spouses, we know our coworkers, and they have that shame, and we have that guilt, we can share with them the unconditional love of God that breaks that all away. See, if we struggle to believe this, we often live in self-hatred. If we struggle to believe that we've been accepted, that Jesus lived the perfect life for us, we, we live in self-hatred, we live in shame, we, we always feel guilty about ourselves, we always feel bad about ourselves. But when we really believe that we've been forgiven, it sets us free to really receive the love of the Father. Amen. Evangelism, if we wanted to say this series is about evangelism, it's about evangelism. The word evangel is somebody that proclaims good news. So this is, this is Good News Sunday. This is a Good News series. Amen. We're going to talk all about the good news and how do we share the good news. That's what evangelism is. It isn't... Uh, it isn't just a technique that you learn how to share the gospel. Maybe you've learned a technique how to walk somebody through the book of Romans or, or how to trick somebody into, into heaven. I've, I've, I've used a few of those techniques, and they're all good. Some people look, I'll, I'll share some of these. I have stories. So there's, there's, there's all sorts of techniques that we could use to, to get people to the point of decision. But you know what? An evangelist, uh, somebody who is an evangelist, somebody who, like we say, we are missionaries, is somebody who speaks good news. Yeah. So we've got a lot of good news. So we believe, most and foremost, that we are saved. And when we say we are saved, we are saved from all of our past. And so some of you guys know family members, some know, know neighbors who, got, who have a past, who have a story, who have some brokenness in their life. And who just proclaim the good news to them is that in Christ, those things are wiped away. You are no longer who they said you were. You are no longer a thief. You are no longer a rapist. You are no longer a one filled with anger. You are no longer a, you are no longer these things. In Christ, we are made new. We are a new creation. Our past is over. This morning, for us sitting in this room, our past is over. Glory. It doesn't have a name over us anymore. Yeah. The name that's over us now is Christ. We are loved sons and daughters mm -hmm. of the Most High. Yes. Our past is over. And yes. not only is the gospel, <coughs> not only is it good news for our past, I can proclaim it to my friends, hey, all that junk that you got, it's all over. But it's also good news for our present. We are being saved. Mm -hmm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, this is exciting stuff this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is, now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you have received, on which you have taken your stand. You have, you have held it by faith. By this gospel you have been saved. If you hold firm into the world the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Keep on holding firm to it. This, this salvation that we have got, keep on believing on this good news. Why? For what I have received to you, I passed on to you as first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried, that he was raised, and on the third day according to Scripture. And he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve, and he appeared to the five hundred and the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and then to the apostles, and last he appeared to me also, as to the abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not deserve to be called apostle. But by the grace of God, I am with, I am what I am, and by the grace of God, to me, was not without effect. No, it worked. I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was within me, whether then it is for I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. The Paul is one that received the gospel, received the good news, after Christ was, was raised. It was revealed to him how great and how awesome it was. He said, some of, some of the apostles, some of the men of God, and they got to see Jesus. They were with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They heard Jesus. They were taught by him. Right? And for me, I had to believe on it. And as I worked on it, he, he finds himself arguing with this, right? Because we know this dichotomy in in the New Testament, right? This 
it's partly work, it's partly going after it, but it's mostly God's grace, God's work in my life. And so I said, I had to work on it. I had to believe. I had to keep on believing. And as I kept on believing it, and as I kept on working it out in my life, and then God's grace began to transform me. And now there is hope that I have in Him because of resurrection. And I had, I had to keep on believing because I knew that Christ was resurrected. That, that if Christ was resurrected, then there's hope for me to be transformed. Amen. And I want to skip that point. We are being saved. Yeah. And so sometimes in our lives, as we walk with the Lord, we find out there's still some crippling things. Our, there's still some brokenness in our life. And so in the ordinary in our mind, we say, well, there's no hope. I guess I just have to live with this issue forever. I guess I'll just have to keep on working on it. Maybe I'll just have to be, be this label and carry this label for the rest of my life. But he says this, because of the resurrection power of Jesus, because Jesus isn't just dead, he didn't just pay the penalty, right. he rose from the grave, yeah. now I have hope. Hallelujah. Nothing's too difficult for him. There's nothing in my life, if, if, this morning, if there's something in your life that you identify is not of God, I still have this happen. I still struggle with this issue. There's still sin that reigns in my life. In the natural, we think about it and we say, there's no hope. I've been dealing with this for such a long time. Uh, man, Jesus, if I just stick with the first part of the gospel, that Jesus died for my sins, he paid the penalty, then, okay. But the fact that Jesus raised from the dead, it demonstrates the power of the gospel. Yes. It demonstrates the power of God to bring hope that is not just something that's defeated, but is actually something that I can have hope in yes. that there's life for me. There is freedom for me. Yes. And so it is something we are we must continue to believe on the gospel, yes. believe on who he is, believe that he can do what he says he can do, because in it it will produce fruit in me. Because there is power in the gospel. And we know that because Jesus didn't just die, he rose again. And he rose again to new life. Yes. And so what he offers us this morning is not just a get out of jail free card. It's an opportunity for life now. Yeah. It says in Romans that the Spirit of God lives in us. <laughs> the same Spirit that raised Christ from yes. the dead Hallelujah. now lives in us. To produce in us Christ. So as we talk about as a series, we're saying we're going to live sent. I'm not telling you guys to go be Jesus. You can't do it. I can't do it. Nobody in here can do it. But if we, be, we are a people that believe in the power of God that is in us, Christ reigns in us and he lives through us by his spirit. Amen. By the same Spirit that raised Christ and said, right. now is in us, in operation in us, and now He lives through us. That's right. So now when I do something good around me, I, I, and somebody says, hey, Andrew, that was, that was great that you cared for that person that way, that you said that to me, that you acted such like yeah. Christ. And I, you know what? It wasn't me. That's right. Because if it was me, then I'd be in my room, close the door, all alone, man, looking at YouTube all day long. I mean, I would be doing my own thing. <laughs> But Christ in me, the Spirit of God in me, now transform my life, and now through my life, it doesn't, it's not me that comes out, it's Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. And our journey as believers is that as we continue to walk with Christ, that more and more, the very image of Christ will be formed in me, as I believe on who He is. Yes. And what He's done. And so now as I live, now it's not, a, not something in addition to my life. I live sent. Every day I'm, just, I'm allowing the Spirit of God to live through me so that Christ is born. So we can't go and be Jesus. But the Spirit of God, it lives in us. The power of God is in us and it's through us. Our lives are then, then become
become a foretaste of heaven. The scripture says, right, that we should pray, God, allow your heaven, allow heaven on earth, your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. How does this happen? Does it happen through prayer? Yes. We can pray and pray, God, bring your freedom, bring your power, and then guess what? When we talk about prayer in this series, we're going to talk about how praying brings Jesus into situations, brings the good news into situations. So I believe fully in prayer. But the second way that it happens, that we live with the fortress of heaven, that as we continue to believe on Jesus, and we're transformed in more and more to His image, and the Spirit of God is living through us, now people around us get to experience what it's like to be in heaven, to be with Jesus. When they're in my home, and all of a sudden, and they're in your home, and all of a sudden, they're, they're, they experience a peace that passes under all understanding. And, and, and they don't know what it is. They haven't experienced that anywhere else. You're experiencing the Spirit of God in me and through me. Yeah. Man, when I show patience for a customer or for a, a child, and, 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 and the parents are, are around me, or my coworkers are around me, and I'm like, why? How does you react that way to that individual? How does you, how does you keep your calm when, when all the kids are just chaotic all over the house, breaking things yesterday, right? You know, I could <laughs> How do you do that? You're, you, there's something different about the, how you interacted in that moment. Oh, man, it's, a, it's God in, I don't know how I do it. Oh, it's Jesus through me. Yeah. Jesus taught me that the Spirit is living through me. His power is yes. And now, man, why is it when you're stressed out? You don't go berserk and you don't isolate yourself and you just keep on going. What is it about you? And it's not me, it's the Spirit of God in me, working through me. And as I continue to, to walk this, this race and I learn about all of who He is, man, it transformed me. And all of a sudden now, instead of getting upset over a situation, there, there's joy and there's peace. Amen. We are a foretaste of a future reality. Amen. So that we, in the Gospel, there's good news for the past, it's over. There's good news for the present, because we have hope that nothing's going to stay the same. All of our brokenness is going to be healed. It's going to be transformation. And it's good news for the future. I got a, a few friends right now that they're worried, worried about the future. They, they don't know how this is going to happen. They don't know what this is going to happen. Their whole life is, is full of anxiety. We have a hope for the future. There's good news about our future. God holds our future. This resurrection in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you know, maybe you have this image of what it's going to be like in heaven. And so maybe you aren't that excited about heaven. Maybe sometimes as a kid, there's different phases I went through growing up uh, of what I thought heaven would be like. And sometimes I thought it was going to be like a, a huge church service. Mm -hmm. Anybody have it? Uh, all we're going to do is just sing songs forever. <laughs> And I thought, hey, we're going to sing songs, and then there's going to be a never-ending sermon. And it's just going to, and it's going to, and it's going to be, I'm just going to be sitting in a, well, we got coffee, coffee chair, but we're going to be sitting in a pew all day long, and all night long, and for all eternity. And some of us is like, some of us, it sounds exciting. We're like, yeah, there's maybe moments in my life that I'm like, yeah, that's exciting. I'll just, never-ending church service. I've been in some good church services. Anybody else there? Man, I know the parents of God is there. I, I don't want to leave. So, yeah. like, you know? yeah. and sometimes I'm like, there's a football game on. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I want to be here forever. <laughs> Your smiles tell me, yeah, you've been there too, right? <laughs> this, this hope for our future is not just going to be, I'm going to hope that one day I get to sit in heaven in a never ending church service. No, the hope for the future is that we will have life sentence. Yeah. That there's actually going to be a new heaven and a new earth. The important part here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that, that Paul begins to describe, it wasn't just that Jesus raised from the dead and he lived in some kind of ghostly body. So when he first, one of the times that he appeared to the disciples, they thought he was a ghost. And so he actually invited them over to the shore and he made some, and he had fish that he made and they cooked the fish and they all ate the fish. Yeah. 
And if we just read that, if, if we just read that story, and we like we don't really know the significance of it. Well, in the belief system was they, they knew that spirit couldn't eat. So that was one of their the beliefs. And so Jesus, in that moment, he was showing them, I'm real. Like I, I'm not just it's not just spirit, Jesus. It's just angel and he up in the sky, you know, after after death. Then, then he gets another point with the disciples and he says, hey, come, hey, Peter, come touch me. Put your hand, put your hands in me. I, I'm real. I'm flesh. I, I'm alive. So our hope for the future is that there is a life to come when we are dead in body and then we become alive and present, we're present with Christ. There is a life to come that is without sin. You think about all the effects of sin on earth, all the brokenness that it caused, all the pain, all the disease, all the nastiness. Imagine a place where none of that exists. That we actually have a new body. And the scripture and Revelation talk about we're going to have a new earth. That it's going to be a new earth established here on earth. One that is perfect and without the effects of sin. And look about when I talk about Genesis chapter 1, that's why I get so excited about it. Because I'm like, man, I want that. I want to walk with God. I want to be with God. I want to be in a place where, you know that, that work and pain and, and, and suffering and all the effects of sin? So I, when I think about heaven, I think, man, when I think about, I want heaven to come on earth, man, I want perfect peace. I want perfect unity. Man, I want no brokenness. And that's what it's going to be like for eternity. Our eternity, all of us living with Jesus with us, His presence yes, with us, in perfect hallelujah. love, in perfect peace, doing good things in all the earth. Yeah. We have a hope for a future. The gospel is good news, not only for our past, not only for our present, but for our future. That it's going to be a day where all things are restored, where all things are made new, where we have new bodies. Some people say amen to that. Right? We, all of this is made new. A life without the very presence of sin. Yeah. That's the good news that we have. That's the message that we have. Thanks. This morning, if you don't know, we, we have a website, uh, cap, capcitychurch.org. And I want to encourage you to go to our About Us page. And on our About Us page, one of the tabs is what we believe. Yeah. And it goes through what we just what we just heard this morning. This is gonna, this is gonna be a foundation for us. Because if we if we are people that are sent to share the good news of Jesus. We've got to understand what good news we have. And some of us won't get as excited this week. We're going to be like, yes, it is good news. Yes, there is hope for me. There is hope for my family. There is hope for my neighbor. There is hope for those who are around me. And then it's going to encourage us to be a sent people. When we experience the gospel, we experience transformation. We experience new life. We get to celebrate who God is and what He's done. If God's done it for us, this is getting into the main part of the series. If God's done it for us, He wants to do it for others. Yeah. And what the amazing thing that we started this morning with is that He wants us to be involved in it. Right. He's sending you. He's sending you. He's sending you. He's sending you. He's sending me. He's sending Pastor. He's sending all of us with this great news that we experience. And we talk about what all the, all the questions. We'll get into all, all these questions about, hey man, what about this? What about that? What if people hate me? What if people do if I know the security I have, if I know the hope that I have, I know, man, there's nothing anybody else can do to me. Right. I know the best thing that I can do in this moment is to share how good Jesus is. Jim Elliott was a famous missionary, and he went on a missionary journey. And actually, the, the moment he landed, he, he was going to a, a, a tribe that is unreached, and he gets to this tribe, and they actually spear him to death. He lost his life for the mission of sharing the gospel. And he, he has this quote, and I love it. And 
And I hope this encourages you this morning that we hold on to these. It says, He is not a fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Jimmy, he says, He is not a fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Jesus says, Matthew 10, Freely you have received, freely give. Yeah. Yeah. We have received such great news. And we can't lose our place as children of God. Mm -hmm. Man, He is full of love towards us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is not a fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. It's not, it's not foolish to go to my neighbor and knock on his door and give him some cookies and share who Jesus is with them. Amen. I'm not a fool. Yeah. It's not a, I'm not a fool when there's people at my, uh, my workplace. Think about this. I mean, or, we just read through the book of Acts, right? Read it through the book of Acts. We've got these people who are standing before ones that have control to kill them. Yeah. To take their life from them. And I just was reading the section this week of, of Paul getting stoned to death, and they thought that he was dead. Right? They, they, they were upset about him preaching about Jesus. They stoned him. They thought he was dead. He gets raised to life, and he goes back into the city, and he continues on his work, right? And I don't know, we're not facing death this morning, but some of us may be fearful about losing their jobs. Who cares? What if we lose our jobs? Don't we, don't we believe in the same God who raised Christ from the dead, that power that's living in us? And don't, and don't we think that if He can raise Christ from the dead, He can get us a new job? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to be breaking, I want to be breaking a rule, and I'm not allowed to talk about Jesus in this workplace. Or I'm not, I don't know if I can talk about Jesus. I mean, isn't He worth it? Yes. Isn't what if there's somebody broken around us and they, you're not going to make their life any worse by telling them about Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Right? That's true. It, it's not going to make anything worse. They, they're already experiencing worse. They're already broken. They're, sin is already in control. Satan already has to be, they're already living in darkness. I mean, what if, we could actually see them have light. We could actually see their, bring some wholeness in their life. We, we could actually see them go from darkness to light, from death to life. That's right. Or send people with a good message, not only for us, but for those who are around us. Yeah. We've got to believe it in our heart that those who do not have Jesus are living in misery. Maybe good to stop. But without Jesus, there's no way. This morning, I want to pray with you. I want to ask one question as we close. Maybe as we went through the gospel this morning, that God brings good news for our past. He forgives all of our past. And you can think of this morning all of the wrong things you've done in our life. Jesus brings an eraser and erases our past. That Jesus is good news for our present. That he brings hope, he brings restoration, he brings peace, he brings power into our everyday life. That we no longer have to be slaves to sin. We no longer have to be bound by our brokenness. But no, we can have healing today in our present. And that Jesus brings good news for our future. That we don't have to fear about the future. That our inheritance is secure in Him. That our position as heaven is secure. That there's a new life, there's a wholeness in our life that God has for us in the future. And what does it say in Romans chapter 1? That all of this is offered to us by faith. All of this is offered to us if we choose to believe, if we choose to have faith in what Jesus has done for us.
So this morning, with every head bowed, we just want to take a moment to meditate on that. Maybe you're in this room and you say, you know what, I, I'm a believer, I've been following Jesus, but there's some areas of the gospel that I'm struggling to believe. Maybe you say, I'm having a struggle to believe that my past is really over, that God has erased that and he's made me new. Maybe you're struggling to believe that, that God can bring freedom to the sin or the brokenness that you currently find yourself in. God, for the present, He wants to bring freedom. Maybe you're struggling to believe that there really is a future to look forward to, to have hope in, to have peace about. If that's you this morning, I just want you to pray and ask God, God, give me faith, help me to believe these things are true. But I also want to ask us to respond to the gospel. Maybe this morning you, you say, I've, I've never made a decision to follow Jesus. I've never fully committed my heart to receiving what Jesus has for me. And this morning, as I'm listening, I understand this is good news. And this is for me. Apart from Jesus, we are children of wrath. We have a penalty of sin that we owe. But Jesus offers us this morning freedom from that penalty. He offers us this morning life. He offers us holiness. And so this morning you say, you know what, Andrew? I want to respond. I want to receive forgiveness. I want to receive this new life that Jesus has for me. I want to make a decision to follow Jesus. That's you. I want to count to three. Now, when I get to the number three, I want to encourage you to raise your hand. I want you, when you're raising your hand, you're saying, Yes, God, I receive the forgiveness. I receive new life. I commit myself to you. And I want to encourage you to do that with all your might, with all your strength, with all that's in you. Raise that hand up because when you do, man, it's going to be a moment that Jesus comes near to you. So are you ready to make that decision this morning? Are you ready to commit your life to Jesus? Are you ready?